a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the holy ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Verbum Domini. because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. 
Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Verbum Domini. As we celebrate today the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle, we can learn more about him from the Gospel and how his life and his example inspire us. And here are three instances that we get from the Gospel. We first hear Thomas's words when the Lord decided to go to Bethany to raise Lazarus from the dead. And traveling there, they would get dangerously close to Jerusalem, where the Jews were seeking his life. This is when Thomas spoke up saying, let us also go that we may die with him. So we see that Thomas is totally ready to follow and stand by the Lord, even to the point of laying down his life with him and for him. He did not want to be separated from the Lord at any cost, and this should inspire us. Our faith should strengthen our resolve to remain steadfast and to always remain in union with the Lord, especially during times of distress or temptation. Next, we hear of St. Thomas at, and we hear his words at the Last Supper. This is when the Lord announced that he was going to prepare a place for them and for each of us. Jesus said to them, where I am going, you know the way. But Thomas replied, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? It's because Thomas asked this question that our Lord revealed himself further. And we have Thomas to thank for this. When our Lord said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Pope Benedict XVI said that St. Thomas's question here, it gives us the right, so to speak, to ask Jesus for explanations. We often do not understand him. He said, let us be brave enough to say, I do not understand, Lord, listen to me, help me to understand. In such a way with this frankness, which is the true way of praying, of speaking to Jesus, we express our meager capacity to understand. And at the same time, place ourselves in the trusting attitude of someone who expects light and strength from the one able to provide them. So Thomas sought to understand and he wasn't afraid to let the Lord know that he didn't understand. That's humility. We pray that we also might have that humility when we don't understand. So it shows his desire to know and to understand the truth. And again, we should not hesitate to ask the Lord when we're struggling to grasp something. And thirdly, we hear in the gospel today of Thomas's own struggle with doubt especially regarding the news of the Lord's resurrection. Remember, he had missed the very first appearance of the risen Lord to the apostles. As Archbishop Fulton Sheen pointed out though, Thomas did not say that he refused to believe, but that he was unable to believe until he had some experimental proof of the Lord's resurrection. That's why he said, unless I see in the hands the print of the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. So it wasn't a flat out refusal, I will never believe, but unless I see and touch myself, then I won't believe. But of course, as we know, after he personally saw and encountered the risen Lord and saw his wounds and touched his wounds, he responded with his great profession of faith, my Lord and my God. And what a great prayer for each of us to make our own, especially during the elevation, during the consecration at mass my Lord and my God, or any time we come before our Lord's Eucharistic presence. St. Gregory the Great, he said that Thomas's struggle with disbelief has actually done more for us than the faith of the other apostles. Again, he was the one struggling and yet he helps us more than the others. St. Gregory said, as he touches Christ and is won over to belief, every doubt is cast aside and our faith is strengthened. 
So the disciple who doubted and then felt Christ's wounds becomes a witness to the reality of the resurrection. And because of Thomas's experience, we also benefit because of our Lord's words to him. When he said, because you have seen me, Thomas, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's us. We have not seen and yet we believe. And it's an encouragement to be strengthened in our own faith. And when we're struggling to make that other prayer of the gospel our own, Lord, increase my faith. So Thomas would go on to preach the gospel in Syria and Persia and in India, and he would lay down his life for Christ and martyrdom, the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate witness. So we ask his intercession today that like him, we might cultivate that desire to never be separated from the Lord, just as he had that desire when they said, let us also go that we may die with him, that we might never hesitate or be afraid to ask the Lord for help and, and explanations when we don't understand something. Lord, help me to understand this. And that in times of doubt, we may be strengthened in our faith. And not only that we might be strengthened in our faith, but as we'll say in the prayer after communion today, that we may proclaim the Lord by our deeds and our life.